We have Eric Vernisseau here from NCSA Basketball. I've got the head coach of the Yellowstone Christian College, uh, Leonard Epps. It is an NCCAA school in Billings, Montana. Coach, how are you doing this morning? I'm doing good. Thanks for having me this morning. No problem, Coach. No problem. We really appreciate you taking the time here to educate our families here and talk a little bit about Yellowstone Christian College. That being said, I'll jump right into the first question here. Can you please tell us a little bit about Yellowstone and uh, and what makes it a unique school and basketball program? You know, we definitely feel that it's important for families to, to kind of get a good feel, you know, about our school and just a bit, kind of about the surroundings. One thing is uh, Billings, Montana, is probably one of the most beautiful places that I've ever been to. Being there in the landscape here is just uh, one of a kind. Being a, a guy from Kentucky and, uh, you know, the bluegrass state, and we have our beauty. But I think when I came out here, I was uh, pleased to see sites that I've never seen before. And it's uh, it's always been a big draw to any uh, recruits that we have on campus. It's just uh, how beautiful the state and, and the scenery is. Also, our program is a, it's a brand new program. So, you know, we are really creating history here. And I think a lot of kids want to be a part of that, cementing their footprints and handprints in, in history and always being part of the first. Also, you know, it's in our name, you know, Yellowstone Christian College. We are a Christ based institution. And I think uh, we try to make sure that we get kids that come here and, un you know, they understand that. And I think, uh, one thing that gives families a peace of mind, knowing that, you know, we are a Christian institution, if they were raised in that manner, you know, they're able to come to school with like-minded individuals and they're able to get a good Christian education. You know, another thing that we have going right now is with the addition of athletics that we're adding to the uh, college, uh, we're also adding new programs and fields of study. You know, and this is going to be something that goes on over the next couple of years. So, you know, we're, we're starting to add things, uh, you know, business, it's education, and music. I know those are some of the things that's on the horizon right here in the uh, next couple of years. And, and, you know, we're just looking to branch out from there. Awesome, Coach. Really appreciate you letting us know a little bit there about Yellowstone. Uh, and it really makes me want to get out there and visit Billings. It sounds like it's a beautiful place. And so you, t you touched a little bit on there having Yellowstone be a Christian-based school, and you guys do play in the NCCAA, which is the National Christian College Athletic Association. Can you talk a little bit about that division level, you know, what it's comparable to, types of schools that you guys play, and what being a part of the NCCAA is, is all about? Being a part of the NCCAA is, you know, hugely fellowship. You know, we gather as Christian institutions and, you know, we compete in a sport that we love, but it's also about fellowship. And, you know, we, uh, before and after the games, we like to get together with one another and, we, you know, we say a prayer after the games. And uh, it, it's really something to behold. It's something special. We liked it because it fit who we are as a school, obviously being a Christian institution. It also allows us to be competitive, you know, in a wide range. And that just kind of speaks on the level of competition that is involved in the NCCAA. A lot of the schools primarily have multiple affiliations. So you, you see a lot of NAI schools affiliated with the NCCAA, and then you also see some NCAA Division II schools affiliated with them as well, which this past year, uh, the national championship for the Division One level was Colorado Christian and Dallas Baptist University, which are both NCAA Division Two schools. So there is a wide range of competition level. You can have your schools that have 300 kids all the way up to schools that have 5,000 kids. The talent level and the competition level uh, ranges vastly, so... Awesome, Coach. That's uh, definitely some new information for our student-athletes to, to think about, and um, it sounds like there's some great basketball being played there in the NCCAA. And then kind of jumping into the next question here, talking a little bit more on the basketball side of things. You said it's a new program there at Yellowstone in your tenure at Yellowstone for your program both athletically and academically. One of the first goals that I have here being, you know, first-year guy here, and with the first-year program is to complete our season. 
you know, we have to complete our season to, to kind of gain that legitimacy in a program. That will solidify that we're going to be around for some time. You know, if you get off to a bad start, you know, you have 20-some-odd games and, and you only compete complete uh, 16 or 17, then that doesn't bode well for for you, for your affiliation, or for future recruits coming into your school. So one of the major things that we're really uh, trying to make sure that we do is uh, complete our season of games. And, you know, academically, I, myself, as a coach, I have a um, a GPA, a, you know, a team GPA that I like to stay around, and that's uh, a 2.8. Cumulative, and uh, you know, I think that's going to push our guys. I think that's really going to push our guys, and that uh, that's really going to push the guys that we have coming in. I think that will push any any collegiate team, but the guys that we have coming in are mostly made up of incoming freshmen, and so you know, when you're an incoming freshman, you have that tough first semester, or first year of college, when you're just leaving the nest and, and you're getting away from home, and you know. Uh, a lot of our guys are coming from out of state, so there's going to be a learning curve that they're going to have to try to adapt and adjust to uh, pretty early. And, you know, also with that in this first year, we, we really hope to be uh, very competitive. Uh, I think I've been able to assemble a, uh, a pretty good group of kids, a uh, diverse group of kids. Uh, I think we will really learn from one another. I think it's going to be a a huge thing for some of our kids to just get around different ethnicities and backgrounds and uh, really learn. So I think we really have a chance to be competitive. And then my last goal, I think this should be the main goal, is to retain all of our players. You know, we always look to try to uh, get new players, but at the same time we want to retain the players that we do have. So we also want to make sure that we give them a great experience here for their first year of college and kind of just start something that can be lasting and we can start making mentors out of the kids that we have and make a mentor the kids that we have coming in. Very cool, Coach. Very cool. You know, talked a little bit about the class that you guys brought in here. So this is going to be the first recruiting class at Yellowstone. So what did you look for basketball-wise in these student-athletes and what made these guys a good fit for your system and for your program? Obviously, when you're recruiting basketball, you, the first thing that hops out at you is uh, athletic ability, and, you know, some of the talent that kids have these days. And I can't say that that's not some of the things that drew me to, to, to most of our kids. But one of the major things that I look for is just uh, the character. You know, we always try to make sure that we get high-character kids, quality kids that, that just kind of have that personality that will fit with what I'm trying to do with this program. You know, we also dive in pretty deep on their academic side of things, and, you know, we hope that they're solid academically. And, you know, with the, with us being a, a Christian institution, we want to get like-minded kids coming in, so we try to make sure that they're believers in Christ. And, you know, with speaking with some of their coaches, uh, we're able to find out a little more about the kid. You know, obviously a kid is going to put on his best face, we try to dive in and we try to reach out to AAU coaches, high school coaches, and um, really find out if the kid is coachable. Because that's one of the major things when you transition from high school to college is if you're going to be able to be coachable. And what I mean by that is, uh, you know, you can come in with all the athletic ability in the world, but if you're not going to be able to transition to another style of play from a different coach, then that's going to be where you bump head. And so we try to make sure all of our kids are very coachable and, and can transition to the style of play that we have set in place for our program. And, and my last thing is, is hard work. As long as you have that intangible in you of giving 100%, then I think everything just kind of follows suit. That's one thing you can't teach is being able to work hard. And that's what I tell all my kids. You don't have to be the most athletically talented person to get a lot of minutes. But if you work hard, then we can make sure we put you in the right spots so that you can be successful and you're going to find time on the floor. We like high-character kids. We like solid academically kids. Uh, we like believers in Christ, coachable guys, and guys that like to work hard. Awesome, Coach. It's interesting. A lot of the coaches we talk to, they don't touch too much 
on the basketball side of things, kind of like you talked about there, you know, you guys are looking for high character, guys who are going to work hard and play hard. And so really important information there for, for especially for, you know, student athletes to, to hear coming from a college coach. So really appreciate that. As you move through your tenure there at Yellowstone, I know the timeline was probably a little bit different for you this year as far as when you would target a student athlete, when you would start to reach out to them, or when we, you would start to evaluate them. So do you think you can try to, you know, explain that a little bit, you know, as you're going to move through your tenure at Yellowstone, when you would start to, to target a student athlete and when kind of the recruiting process would start for you and when you would start to reach out to uh, potential recruits? It's kind of hard because, you know, uh, we're in competition with all the big boys. So we're in competition with uh, with the Division One, with the Division Twos, and, you know, on down the line. And so we have to really try to be smart and creative of when we go after kids. We try not to go after them too early because that's a lot of legwork for us coaches to do. It's always good to make relationships, but if it's too early, then they still have time to get some of those offers from some of those bigger schools, which, you know, obviously will pull them away from us. We like to go out to kids going into their senior year, so, you know, that summer. That AAU uh, summer circuit is uh, pretty big just to get kids on our radar. And then, you know, once we once we learn about them and know about them, just kind of follow up with them, you know, through the first part of the year. And then after Christmas is where we really make our big push, and that's where we start to recruit pretty heavily as far as making phone calls and seeing if we can get them out here on visits you know, things of that nature. Awesome, Coach. It's, it definitely is important for uh, student-athletes to kind of understand uh, at each division level, you know, when, you know, the uh, important times of the recruiting process are. So appreciate the uh, the information there. To wrap up the podcast here, when you guys said you, your, your big uh, summer is that summer before senior year when you guys are out on the AAU circuit watching student-athletes play and starting to contact student athletes. Can you kind of touch on some things that you've seen through the recruiting process for student athletes to focus on, like some do's and some don'ts, not only on the court, but also talking to kids on the phone so that they kind of have a a sense of some things that they should continue to do and maybe some things that they should uh, think twice about doing? Some do's, especially on the court, always maintain yourself, keep yourself composed, uh, you don't want to show any type of negativity in your posture or anything like that when you're out there competing because there's always somebody looking, and if there's not anybody looking, then your coach is always able to give a good feedback of how you are as a person and a player and whether you're coachable or not. And what they do, this is what I tell a lot of kids, be proactive. And when I say that, I mean reach out to as many coaches as possible. One thing that I kind of live by and I, and I always try to tell everybody there's nobody that's going to work harder for you than you. If you're not willing to get out there and grind and try to get something for yourself, there's nobody that's going to just give it to you. So, you know, I tell kids to, you know, contact as many coaches as possible. There's nothing that's going to hurt about that. Respond in a timely manner when coaches reach out to you. So if a coach gives you a call, he leaves a message, or if a coach shoots you an email, Respond in a timely fashion, you know, so get right back to them. You know, don't blow them off or say, I'll get back to them in a week or so. Uh, I think that shows a lot to a coach. Another do is whenever you start to build that relationship with that coach, get your stuff in. Get your application turned in. Get your paperwork turned in. That's less of a headache for a coach. And it just kind of lets him know that you're on top of things. That's one of the things that I can tell you that coaches don't like to fool around with is kids, once they kind of decide that's where they're going to go, coaches don't like to fool around with. And this kid's not even getting his stuff turned in. You know, he's not he's not on the ball. He's not doing this. Because I think that kind of lets them know that it's going to be a little bit difficult having this kid here on campus. So, you know, make sure that you get your application and get your paperwork turned in early, and that way you're on top of things. Some don'ts that I see, don't settle. Don't settle for your test scores that you get. I know a lot of kids don't like taking tests, but, you know, the ACT and the SAT scores, they can always be improved. And, And like I said, we're a big school to look at kids like that academically, you know, and I think it helps you, and you can also end up getting some funds to go to school for that. So don't settle with the score that you get. Always try to outdo yourself and, and, and try to do better. Keep Just keep pushing on that academic side of things. 
And one big thing, you know, don't ignore calls or emails. You know, you may get a call or an email from a coach that may be a lower level than than what you thought that your skill level would put you at. But that doesn't that doesn't make that program less than another program. And so what I say is, take advantage of every single opportunity that is being brought to you. You know, you never know what is going to pan out. You never know what's going to be the best fit for you. So I, I really advise kids to take advantage for anybody that contacts them and follow up on any calls or emails that they get from any coach. And then my last don't, and I can't stress this enough, kids, do not wait until the last minute. A lot of kids get caught up in trying to wait for the last minute and try to get the, the best possible deal, which is I think everybody sees that Division One calling. It's hard to explain to a kid that if they're not calling by the beginning of your senior year or in the middle of your junior year that, you know, it's not coming. You know, and I don't want to be the bearer of bad news, but the reality is, you know, you want to take advantage, like I said earlier, you want to take advantage of the opportunity. So if you wait too long, that opportunity may not be there anymore. And so I tell kids, to, you know, if you get an offer, if you get an opportunity, follow up on it, but don't wait too long because that opportunity may not last. So try not to wait till the last minute. You know, I'm actually dealing with some kids that, that, that have done that now, and, you know, they're kind of frantically scrambling around. And so they wish they would have taken the opportunities they had earlier, and now, you know, it kind of puts them in a bad situation where, you know, they don't know what they're going to do. And, you know, so don't wait to the last minute and, and, and try to make a good situation out of the things that you've been offered. Some really good stuff for our student athletes to think about. So with that being said, I want to give you an opportunity here to, um, you know, kind of let our student athletes know how they can – uh, learn more about Yellowstone. If you guys have a website, if you guys have a Twitter handle, anything like that that they can uh, look into Yellowstone a little bit more in detail. Yeah, you know, academically, uh, you know, to start, you can always visit our, our academic website at www.yellowstonechristian.edu. Athletically, you can go to our brand new website. It is uh, www.gocenturians.com. Uh, and there you can, you know, you can read up on on me, on, on some of our coaches, some of the things that we have going on after, athletically as well. We, we also do have a Facebook page, YCC Basketball, on Facebook, and then on Twitter. It's out there, and I think that may be YCC Basketball as well. Contacting-wise, you can always contact me. My email address is, is listed on our athletic website. You know, we, we really hope. That, that parents, we really hope that kids start taking our college and, and taking what we have to offer seriously. Coming there, you'll get a good Christian education, and we hope bring lasting memories and, and lifetime friendships out of it as well. Awesome, Coach. Really, really appreciate you taking the time here today. I know our student athletes um, are going to love to hear about Yellowstone and learn a little bit more about the NCCAA. So really appreciate you taking the time. Uh, I want to thank you uh, again here um, for uh, for talking to our, our families and, and helping out um, in the recruiting process with them. Oh, no, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. And we, uh, I think um, this will be big, and I really hope to uh, continue our relationship, and I hope to hear from some future perspective student-athletes.